Welcome back to our studios in Cologne for our last match of the day. But before MYM take on NIP, it's time to read our winning tweets. And I've got Snoopy here with me to talk about them because, of course, we wanted to know which unconventional jungle champion would you like to see picked more in the LCS and why. And because you did your A to Z jungle marathon, I think it's perfect. The first tweet is from at Musica Vibes. It says, I would love to see Pantheon in the jungle. He has very strong gank potential and is very difficult to deal with in the late game. I'd say Pantheon's actually a lot of fun. I played it in solo queue when I was doing my A to Z. It was a lot of fun. But did we not see Hercubot playing that? He played in LCS, didn't he? Yeah. And he actually played pretty well, I'm pretty sure. So Pantheon's a lot of fun, but you need to watch out because he falls off a bit late game if you don't get those kills. That's the only thing. Our second tweet is from Ad Doritos. Uh, let's bring back Jungle Alistar. He is too entertaining to watch, and every team used to cry when it was locked in. Yeah, it was a real terror. He actually, he was used to my main back in season two, he was one of my mains. Um, I used to get perma banned by uh, Moscow 5 back then. He used to be perma banned against me. The good thing about Alistair is he has no, uh, doesn't need farm. He used to be able just to go gold for 10 back in season two. He has loads of CC and he was great for team fighting. The third one comes from Big Bang Shooter Leona. The sheer amount of CC that she can bring to any lane can be devastating even before level six. And I believe it was Nintendo Dex that uh, tried it in, uh, over in NA. Yeah, it did. I don't really like it though. It's so slow, like clearing the jungle is just painfully slow. And like after level six, if you get no ganks by level six, you just kind of, kind of fall off. Like you're, you're useless in a sense. That's the, I prefer Alistair for that role than Leona. The fourth one is from Andreas Herman 7 I would like to see more people do 80 or AP Fizz in the jungle. He has extremely high kill potential and a great counter jungle and is a great counter jungler. I hate Fizz. Like, if you start playing Fizz jungle, I, I'm seriously, I'm not, I just, I hate you straight away. It's the most annoying champion ever to play against. I don't think it's that great in the jungle. He has great mobility because he can jump over walls and stuff like that, but I just hate the champion. Like, I'm never going to play it at least. I'm going to queue up tonight and play Fizz jungle. <laughs> Our last tweet is from Ad Cassidy1336. Uh, LeBlanc jungle would be interesting. Her ganks are super efficient after level 6. She can surprise burst you and is uncatchable. That's something I would say we'll never see it, but then again, we saw Karma in the jungle again today. Uh, well, I would say Karma's a bit different from LeBlanc because, like, similar to Malzahar, you remember that? Like, Malzahar yes. is actually a pretty, it's a pretty good pick. Um, so is Karma. <laughs> but LeBlanc, she kind of struggles because she needs farm. And, like, you say, it's like, post-level 6 ganks are good, but are you really going to get to level 6? It's that hard to clear the jungle with LeBlanc. She's so squishy, it's a bit of a nightmare. Not convinced on uh, LeBlanc. Thank you very much, Snoopy. You're welcome. Of course, our winner tweets will be receiving a Logitech G510S gaming keyboard, and the winners will also be contacted via Twitter. And now it's time for our last game of the day, so let's head over to Joe and Jason. Thanks a lot, Shox, and welcome back to our final game of the day, as Shox said, as Meet Your Makers take on Ninjas in Pajamas. And unfortunately, MYM didn't get that win they were looking for, but NIP, with their new top laner in mind, were able to pretty much pull back a win and get their first one with their new lineup. So let's take a look then at the two teams, starting with Meet Your Makers on the blue side there, of course, Kubon in the top, Makata in the jungle, Charu the mid laner, Makla the AD carry, and Libic the support. Of course, in the red corner, going to be NIP, Mimer in that top lane, Maluno in the jungle, Bjergsen in the mid lane, and Freeze and Aficio as AD carrying support. Well, we asked both teams what they think of each other and what they think it's going to take to beat the opposition. Well, it looks like, as you can see on your screen coming up very shortly, it's actually very one-sided uh, one for NIP. Yeah, I totally agree, but that's not exactly oh, wow. what Sorry. I said, Jason. Wow, I blanked thanks, on that one. Thanks for listening to me for I that one. I blanked on that one. So let's have a look then at that video that we were promised. The hard thing to predict right now about MYM is they have been using the same tactics for the last six weeks, but at some point they have to change it up. They're not a team you just roll over, they can beat everyone. I think that the new NIP top laner lacks some experience. If we put him under the pressure, I think uh, he may not handle it. They have very limited champions they run. If I was in YM, I would have done everything I could the last few weeks to probably change that up. So I'm sure that we'll bring something new here for the weekend. So let's have a look then, Jason, at how the guys at home voted on lollysports.com for the winner of this game. As I was saying before, NIP, very <laughs> one-sided for them. 71% of, the, of you guys think that they actually pull off this one against Meet Your Makers. And it's, I don't know, I thought it'd be a little bit closer considering NYM been on a little bit of tilt. NIP have a new top laner, but with the win yesterday, has a lot of confidence now. Yeah, I think that's a big point of it, the win yesterday, which is solidified Mimer, and everyone said, okay, 
he can do this one. So let's break down where the teams are right now. Yesterday was a day to forget for me to make. They had a woeful time losing out to alternate. And time's working against them. They're going to need to change their form if they want to be challenging for those top spots come week nine. Yeah, and in the interview yesterday that RNA had, he summed up Mitra Makers pretty well. He says they have a very unique style, but the other teams have figured it out. We looked back, you know, in week two and we kind of expected that would really happen. But the thing is, they need to change up their strategy. They've been slowly starting to do that as we saw Kuban playing Karthus top in and Charu on Fizz, but it didn't fully work out for him yesterday. So on the other side then, of course, going up against Ninjas in pajamas who managed to pick up their first win with their new top laner Mimer yesterday against Evil Geniuses nonetheless. It was a game which really looked like it was going to go EG's way for quite a while, but Ninjas in pajamas showing once again some incredible character to hold on until they could pick up that Baron and turn the tide right from there. Uh, and you know, after that it was kind of short work and a really abrupt ending to a drawn out game. Yeah, it was. And the thing, it was all around that decision that just like, all right, guys, let's just rush Baron. Let's go for it. We saw, they saw uh, Shaker back in there and they went for that big play, that really ballsy play that a lot of teams won't really do. And to me, that kind of makes a team great is your ability to just blow caution to the wind and just go straight for it. Because, you know, it's high risk comes high reward. And it worked out, obviously, saw in that game. But the new top bidder, he had a diff difficult time. But I talked to Defisio after the game as he was on the analysis desk with me and he was saying that. He, he knew Mimer was nervous. He was, you know, asking, like, should I do this? Should I do this? Where should I go? Is, is he up? And after that win, as you mentioned before, he's got to feel more confident. And with that, his nerves have got to be, have to be gone right now. And he's going to play phenomenal. Yeah, there's no doubt about it that Mimer, as, as you'd imagine, every player coming into the LCS, on this uh, stage here in front of the crowd, he's, he's going to be nervous their first time around for things. And he really did well yesterday. So hopefully that kind of that win really helped him out in terms of the confidence boost that he uh, probably needs for the remaining weeks here. And he'll be able to bring that A game into our final game of today. And think of the pressure that's on him. I mean, he's, he has to feel more confident. He has to be more relaxed because week seven, I mean, you're at the top of the tables and you are so close to being in that first place. You're so close which is weird to say, but you're close to even dropping out of sixth place if you just lose like two or three games and a couple of teams win those two or three games. So a lot of pressure on his shoulders and we're gonna see over time or over these two uh, next two weeks and this game, if he can withstand that pressure. Well, there is Meet Your Makers, a team which slipped to bottom of the table despite a brilliant start for them uh, here in the summer split. Of course, they were second after week one four for one, losing only to Alternate, who themselves have now slipped away for the first time in the summer split from the top of the leaderboard. And, uh, well, there's got to be a lot of pressure on them. From from themselves here, I mean, Meet Your Makers are a team that have been together for an incredibly long space of time. I think, uh, despite the fact that Kubon dropped out for a matter of weeks, really came them back into the team, they are one of the longest-standing teams in competitive League of Legends across the world. So, you know, they fought so hard for this. Not qualifying for spring was obviously a big hit for them. They managed to do it this time around for summer, and they're going to be wanting to make sure that they keep this, this dream of the LCS alive. And you have to think that if you think of any Polish team or all Polish team, you're going to think of Meet Your Makers. They're, you know, obviously all Polish, they're fighting for their country practically just like Gambit is with Russia and that has to apply even more pressure onto it. But like this is the time. If you want to make yourself stand out as a team, like you have to win these games. You cannot afford to lose anymore. And I feel like with every game that does slip away from Meet Your Makers, they're just slowly getting more and more down on themselves. So we're going to get into the picks and the bans here. And already a couple are coming out. Evelyn and Elise being banned out in the early stages of things. And you know, this is, a, for me, a hard one to call in terms of the outcome of the game. But uh, we can probably see some trends here coming through. Lissandra, of course, going to be banned out. Very, very strong champion right now. Twisted Fate taking out Charu. Loves to run that Twisted Bait, even with a teleport. No problem to have two in there, so not wanting to let that one go through. Yep, I'm actually really surprised to see Twisted Fate banned out against Charu, because he's 1-5 with him so far, which isn't yeah. honestly a, a good record. I mean, then again, Meech Makers haven't won that many games uh, throughout the entire season, but it's just, it, I don't know, it's just, it's just a weird ban. But we are seeing the Evelyn, which Maluna we have seen play before, I believe, and it's one of those tricky junglers that mid-game you're really powerful. The whole stealth detection in terms of buying an Oracle that early is a little bit risky, but obviously with the change of 3.9, it doesn't hit you that bad since you can use it through death. Um, and then at least take away from Kuban, why not? You yeah, have to. And, and the, the Karthus as well. I mean, we've seen that Meet Your Makers can play him in the mid lane, can play him in the top lane as well, of course. So I yep. uh, wanted to get that one completely out of things. And what am I going to go for? There's Kuban on your screen. And 
We're getting a little bit confused uh, about <laughs> things going on thinking. there. There's, there's a lot of eyebrow movement going on from this one, uh, which indicates to me that media makers were probably not expecting that Carthus maybe to go out and wondering exactly where they're going to put this first pick. Hey, look back to his Karthus uh, against Gisha against Ultra versus Kerp in the top lane. Like, he got double bus off of RNA right off the bat, but that one little misstep gave Kerp, uh, double bus gave him the strength to pretty much fight him. And it looks like they still not even sure exactly what they want to go. They're still kind of arguing. They really want to win this game and looks like they will go for Jarvan, which that's not really a, that's not really a champion that Makati plays but we think back to when he first started Shed Nautilus and now uh, as you saw yesterday he played Lee Sin so it looks like he started to change up his jungler champion pool a little bit yeah started to go in there you know those more fighty uh, junglers rather than going for the the pure utility really that yeah. he was uh, playing a lot of the time so and uh, Ninjas in pajamas now got two picks are they going to be thinking about AD carries? Of course, Freeze himself doing incredibly well up until now. Now that he's recovered from his sunburn that he had over in Tenerife. But looks like they're going to lock in the Thresh for Deficio, who's done really well in the past with that. And also the Rise coming in for Mime. Of course, that's the champion we saw him running yesterday. Yeah, it's really weird because when we heard him in the interview and when we talked to him, he likes, you know, Rengar, likes Evelyn, like these stealthy champions, like to be really aggressive. Rise isn't necessarily that kind of champion in the beginning until you get tanky enough to really handle the damage that comes right back at you. But, I mean, he didn't do terrible on Rise. He did lose to Wicked in terms of farm earlier on, but we can pretty much say that was just due to nerves. Uh, but yeah, the, the Thresh for Deficio, five for six with him. Very strong champion for him. But we're gonna see how it's gonna work out, because right now they have two champions with some really good CC. You know, you have the Rune Prison and then the Hook coming out of Thresh. So you have the potential to burst someone down. I wanna see what they're gonna follow that up with with Bjergsen. Well, looks like we could be seeing a Fiddlesticks in there with Caitlyn. Well, indeed, so that's what Media Maker's going in for here. And already you see a bit of a pattern there for when it comes to team fighting stages on Media Maker's side with Fiddlesticks and Jarvan too very much go in there and get the job done, champions. I'm actually... Okay, so I'm slightly confused by the Fiddlesticks pick. Because, I mean, Ryze is like a bane to any AD carry. Because when you auto-attack him, you're pretty much in his range for spells. Caitlyn is one of those huge champions that actually extends the range so you have the ability to attack without being harassed but to pair it with the fiddlesticks so in lane it doesn't really work that well like a fiddlesticks of ours would be really nice because you can lock them down follow up with the fiddlesticks ultimate cc forever you're going to get a kill but i don't want to say that'll ever be mid lane that the caitlin i was thinking potentially it could be because right now char he's not sitting on teleport which that's scary <laughs> i mean he's changing things up if he doesn't run teleport flash ghost almost as much range as a teleport if you do it right <laughs> not quite uh but we are going to possibly be seeing aatrox and draven coming out here so this is the first time that we're going to be seeing draven here in europe post 3.9 of course had the changes to its passive uh aatrox as well being coming in we'll see whether that ends up being in the jungle or even in the top lane which is where we've seen darian running but in the games where it wasn't darian with aatrox it was aatrox jungle yeah so i I want to touch on the, the Draven. So in 3.9, his bleed was taken away off of his Q, well, and a crit. And also his passive was changed around a little bit, which is part of the whole bleed effect. So he gets extra gold and he kills a minion. It stacks up until you kill a champion, then you get that extra gold. But the thing is, we've talked to, or you've heard North America and their opinions on it, saying he's weak now without that bleed. But in Europe, we've heard a couple of people saying that it makes him stronger. The fact that you don't have that bleed, means, which means you can harass under tower a lot more. And if you get a kill in lane, you snowball really hard because of that extra gold you get. Well, we'll see that in action here for the first time in 3.9 here in Europe. See how Freeze does with him. He, a very aggressive AD carry player. Huh. Anyway, as on the other side right now, meet your makers sat with Ari and a Shen. A Shen going through to the ninth pick of the game. And a Shen going through when oh, there's already a Jarvan locked in. So we know Makati as a jungle Shen player, but I would have to say he's going to actually be playing Jarvan here. We're going to see Kumon yeah. on, on Shen in that, in that top lane. And that is a very... Very interesting lineup. You have a lot of burst potential coming out of Char. We know how good he is on Ari. And of course, Fiddlesticks, that CC you have is just... I, I can't think of a word for it properly. It's just a nuisance for if you're on the enemy team. It's amazing to have if you're on his team. But we're going to see how it's going to work out because the one thing that shuts eight trucks down really well is just CC. Yeah. So what a, what's Bjergsen going to have is the, the real question here, I guess. Thinking that Mima is going to be taking that rise in the top lane. And there's a Gragas champion that we were not used to seeing a whole lot of. We might see him two games in a row, not two games in a row, but two games in one day here. And he will be locked in. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure if that will be middle, though, for Bjergsen. But, but just looking as, it, as their whole cop goes, if you get a pull onto someone and the rest of the team is behind him, 
Just use the barrel between them. You split them up completely with a Draven, with an Aatrox, with a Rise. You can burst them down completely. If you just land a Rune Prison on someone, knock everyone else away. Like, you have the potential to burst someone down quickly. And if they Rune Prison Ari, Char is going to have a really tough time dealing with, with the damage that will come out against them because Rise is really good counter to her. It stops that mobility that she has. It makes her so powerful. So here we go then. And really interesting to see how Freeze goes about this whole Draven. As he said, first time that we're going to be seeing with that change passive League of Draven now his new passive name, which is for me a fantastic nod to uh, just Draven as a whole because he is so damn cool. Uh, so we'll see how that one uh, all works out for them. As I said, Deficio and Thresh, and that's the thing about uh, you know if it's if it's Thresh for the for the hook and play and the time that that gives Draven, or even the Nami that Deficio likes to play as well to to bubble up and allow that free damage to come in, uh, then it's always dangerous for that Draven with or without the bleed, in my opinion. Yeah, it is. And we're going to see how they're going to play it, though. I'm actually, I agree with you on this. I'm 100% curious to see how they're actually going to pull this one off, what they decide to really do here. But the the Gragas, like that, it's still confusing me a little bit. I mean, it's not a bad champion. And if you build it like a certain way, you have the damage or the, the potential to burst someone down from 100 to 0. Not to mention, you do have a nice range uh, ultimate to use against Fiddlesticks to stop him from ulting in if you can spot him before that happens. So we can see that players loading into this one. Our final game of week seven here from Cologne. Mima on your screens, the new guy for Meet Your Mate. Uh, sorry, for NIP. That would be a real turnaround in, uh, in the course of one day if he'd managed to get himself onto the MYN team by now. Well, that is Meet Your Makers, a team at the bottom of the league. And a win here in the final game of Week 7 would go a long way to giving them some confidence back, I think, Jason. Some much-needed confidence, too. I mean, they could really use it at this point to really kind of fight for the top of the tables. And let's take a look at Frieza's runes. He's running 19 flat on repens, so it's a little bit similar to what you what he normally or would run on Draven. Um, just stack that armor pen because then you do so much damage to that person. And right now, they're kind of... Well, he's going to go for red here, and Defiso is just going to ward up to, to see any invade coming at him right now. And Kade taking that flag toss is going to be able to spot NIP, going to be able to stop it, but I think they're going to still commit for this uh, invade. Well, the ward was put down on the top side by Deficio there just to make sure that they've got vision of MYM if they decide to try and turn the tables and go for that red buff. Livic himself had warded down in the bottom of the tri bush. They've not got one on the top side, though, and Livic's the only man with wards at this point for MYM. So unless he comes down and wards there, there's going to be no vision except this lone Jarvan in there who actually gets away, but there is a body slam through the wall. They're going in towards Makata now, but are they going to be able to have the range to keep this? Uh, one oh, they going. They can't get in there. And they decide to actually ward and move off. They could have. They just didn't know where the rest of the mutual makers were because Bjergsen, his body slam is off cooldown in one second right after he used it there. And would have been a slow would have let the rest of his team catch up and that would have been a kill. But playing it safe, they don't want to give up Minions any kills early on. I mean, this is a big game for them. If they win this one, it'll help, you know, bring them together as a team since they obviously have that new top winner and help get them one step closer to the top of the table. Well, we'll see about that one. Of course, NIP right now currently 10 wins for 9 losses. There's the stats from Mima yesterday. 3-3-5 three, three, on Rise against EG. And not a super impressive scoreline overall, but the damage output that he was doing later on into the game was really a big thing for NIP. Yeah, I don't think that represents exactly how that game really went, because it wasn't a very high kill game. True. I mean, so 3-3-5 three, three, is pretty much consistent in over at least 75% of all the kills that happened. Um, throughout the whole thing, but Lino gonna be taking blue. He's actually a little bit slower right now than Makate, but that's due to having that Caitlyn Fiddle Six top lane where they could help out a little bit quicker. So it's gonna slow him down. But we, we talked about this yesterday that Aatrox, he's a really strong early game jungler. If you don't make those ganks happen, then you kind of fall off a little bit, just like Xin Zhao. So let's talk about the lanes here then as they start to shape up. We're gonna see the duo in that top lane, and of course, it's gonna be Fiddle and Caitlyn versus Draven and the Thresh. So talk us through that one here, Jason. I mean, what's your opinions on how that one's going to go down? Well, if a hook doesn't land, it should be a pretty easy lane for Caitlyn and Fiddle Six, just because if Draven does get in, you can just fear him and keep him off of you or even exhaust him like that. But he has cleanse. So with that down, that means he cannot get away from the fear that's going to come out of Libix. So actually gives him a nice strong advantage. And it looks like NIP, they realize this as they're backing away. Yeah, interesting to to cleanse that one off straight away. I'm not sure how much of a, a real danger there was there for uh, Freeze, but obviously didn't want to take too much damage and wanted to stay in there as they go on towards Rise. Slow does come down, but Mima not really in too much danger from that one, and he'll walk away. No first blood just yet.
just making his presence known right there. But that does let um, the rest of NIP know in the top lane that Jarvan's not going to be there. Makati won't be there to stop them, so they could play aggressive. But just with that cleanse down, you see how passive NIP has to play. And Freeze is going to have a tough time. He's already down in CS against Caitlyn, who is a naturally strong champion against Draven. As you can see right there, has the range advantage over him. Can just harass him down. And you're going to see a Freeze. He's got to be able to farm well. He's got to be able to do well early because he's all dependent on that and, and how his items build into that late game. And that was Maluno just waiting off to the sides here to see if he could get any kind of uh, chance to get it on towards Charu, who is running Teleport. We kind of put you off it earlier on when we were talking about yeah. Ghost and Flash, but of course, he's running that trusty Teleport. Wouldn't really expect anything different from Charu. As an IP here having to farm up underneath their own turret in the top lane. I think Freeze is, is fine with that, though, because yeah. I mean, you have so much AD that it's really easy to farm under the turrets. You don't even need the support helping you last hit here. But Maluna, he was sticking around middle. He wanted to make a gank happen, but unfortunately for him, he just didn't have that possibility. Right now, Bjergsen, he's, he's farming decently well. Charu should be able to beat him early on just because of that range advantage. And as long as he stays you know, within 10-15, it shouldn't be that bad for him. So, top lane now. Being frozen out a little bit more in the middle of the lane by Meet Your Makers. I don't have the chance to at least put down some damage uh, onto Freeze as he comes out to try and get that farm with the range advantage that they've got over him. Not to mention that horrible, uh, that horrible silence that comes out of fiddlesticks every so often that would really throw them off and stop them getting out what they need to get out if it turns into a fight. Everything about Fiddlesticks is horrible if you're on the other team. Well, yeah. I mean, that's how I'm looking at it right now. I mean, you even forget about the passive of him where he reduces the magic resist of people around him. So that makes Charo even stronger. You stack that with the full penetration build, which I don't think is actually going to be going. It makes you do so much more damage. But NIP, they're having a tough time, but they're able to farm on a turret really well. I mean, he's not down... Well, no, he's down quite a bit of CS. He's down 15 CS right now. But he still should be able to farm quite well. Maluno, he wants to make something happen. But right now, you do have the hook landing. Oh, the hook landing in on towards Libic here. Can Maluno get involved? Freeze is super low, so they can forget him getting joined in on the fight as Libic is going to flash. There's a jump in. First blood comes down for Deficio, but here comes the teleport. Charu goes in. He's going to pop the passive there of Maluno. Have they got the damage to keep them away? No. Charu gets one. Ulti running now. Has he got enough damage to get two? He goes to Freeze. Gets a double kill. The hook actually missed there from Deficio. That could have been the kill for him under the tower. But nice done there's the teleport again from Charu coming up big and just showing why he loves that summon now Bjergsen just gonna push in that lane but a great job of him to come in it was a I, I wanted to think a little bit too late but when they realized how much damage they did back to the team and how they realized that freeze he got hit with a pilt over peacemaker right as the fight started so he wasn't even in the fight and they knew that he could actually be able to turn that around pick up two kills but Bjergsen he's heading top for macro he is level six and he is spotted by a war but I don't think he has the damage to kill him well, Makla, what's he gonna do here? There's the body slam missing. Makla <laughs> flashing away from the Baron. He's like, what damage, Bjergsen? None of it's gonna hit me. I am out of here. But flash burn, I suppose, and that's something for them to look forward to as Makata comes in here on towards Mimer and decides, nope, not gonna be able to uh, really push down for him. Kuban actually right now got a 12 CS lead over Mimer yeah. and a level advantage. I'm really surprised by that. Well, no, 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 I'm not surprised by that. I'm surprised by the fact that Makata's camping him quite a bit. I mean, yeah, they're trying to pick off, I, I want to say they're weak link, and I don't mean anything bad by that, but just weak link in terms of not playing with NIP as much as Extinct did previously. So he won't be obviously in syner or synergy with the rest of his team, but considering they're ganking him and not Bjergsen, not Freeze in the top lane, it's it's a little bit odd, but so far it's working out. It's allowing Kuban to get strong. It's allowing him to get that free farm, and he's going to become a real nuisance when he starts a split push. Oh, Freeze already with that one death actually picking up the... Uh, Vamp Scepter has his first item in there. Double Doran's Blade and Berserker Greaves all done up here for Mackler's Caitlyn. That's going to give him more chance to be dodging those hooks that come through and generally just being a lot more mobile and able to escape from any pressure that comes down for NIP. Right now you see six, 700 gold lead for Meet Your Makers after everything that went down there in the early stages. But almost eight minutes in, pretty low scoring game up until now. Yeah, and we look at where those kills went. I mean, you got to keep in mind, they went over to Char. Look what he came back to lane with. A nice large rod. Seven minutes in. Like, that is really hard for Bjergsen to deal with. And when his ultimate's up, Char, I mean, he doesn't have Ignite, so his kill potential in lane really kind of diminishes. But with the nice large rod, he's still going to hurt quite a bit. He still should be able to pressure Bjergsen quite well. But there still always is that threat of Bjergsen trying to one-combo him. Look at the CS between the AD carries, though. That's the, the real worry for me right now. Yeah. Freeze 
38 to 62. That's already a 5,000 gold lead that's uh, a 5,000. Wow, that would be really impressive. 500 gold lead uh, that's appeared for Makla. And it's all due to him blowing that cleanse right off the bat. I mean, yeah, he got feared and he got exhausted and he wanted to get out of that, but with that cleanse going down, he can't afford to trade with this Caitlyn who can just outrange him. And we all know how good Mackler is with micromanagement. We saw a little bit earlier, you know, when Bjergsen came to gank him and we saw it, or we can see just see it in lane period. And that's really going to hurt them because now Draven is going to be as strong as he should be. He should be able to dominate his lane and then kind of take that into the mid to late game. But without that, he's just not going to do that much damage. He needs some kills somewhere. And Maluno, he's got to make those ganks happen, which it looks like he's currently going for. Well, we'll see about that. He's on the top side of the map, at least, but looks like he's actually headed back down here. So, and I'd be really struggling to get in there and uh, really get anything done with the jungler. Makata, meanwhile, is headed up into this top lane. There's a ward down in that brush, which NYM should be aware of because they put their own ward down and Freeze actually attacked it there. So they know that they've got vision in. As the pink ward does come down there as well from Deficio, took two hits, but that's pretty much thrown Makla off, uh, Makata off. Yeah, why is he still there? That is a little weird. I mean, Duffler, they knew that the ward was put down, but yet he's sticking around. So I, I don't yeah. know, it might be a little bit of miscommunication. It might be just a way of not noticing the ward went down there. But either way, they're going to get this turret down very low. And Bjergsen's coming up there, but he's going to be too late to stop it. And Maluno's not in position to really make the gank happen, so they're just letting the turret go down for free. Yeah, and I mean, even just the presence of Makata there in that rush has allowed them to get that turret because they know that they can't fight because they're going to have uh, that one on top of them as Bjergsen gets hit by the charm. But well, not really too much. He's just going to uh, finish only, off any of those creeps. The only thing that can really charm him is beer. Yeah. Tower Fest Gracchus. Exactly. As we are going to see the teleport coming down into this bottom lane. Mima did get taunted up there and escape. He is not going to do from this one. Kubon picks up that kill. So not only got the CS lead now, he's got a kill advantage over Mima. <laughs> Kubon just looks over at Charlie like, yeah, I got the kill over you. Take that. But yeah, that was just really well done. And that's the power of that teleport. And if you don't respect it early on, you can really snowball a game out of your hand. And Maluno, he's going to try to come around middle to make play happen on Makate, but Makate has flash. And right now, NFP, it seems like they're at a loss of what to do. Yeah, I, I think so as well. That I mean, Charu, we always talk about his teleport and how he is not the, the player that utilizes it so much in the early game. Exactly. One thing that Aranea really talked about yesterday, though, is you know, the, the, what you have to do against Meet Your Makers and that, and that constant threat of the teleport is really be careful as to how far you pushed up on a lane, especially if you don't know if there are wards behind you, because that's where Meet Your Makers are getting all, the, all their advantages from recently. Oh, Libic. And he flashes away. I was going to say he's horribly out of position from that one. Going to get slowed down after he dodged the hook, but you now flash burn. Bit of a target maybe later on, but at least not fodder for NIP there. And you saw NIP, that they wanted to chase him down, but they backed away yet again. I mean, we look at what happened at level one when they could have killed Makati right there. There's no way he's going to be able to escape, and yet they, they sat back. They didn't know where the team were, even though obviously we could see. And it just kind of shows that NIP, they're playing very different from what they normally would. Like, with Extinct on the team, they're just aggression, 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 fight, fight, fight. Don't care if, you know, we might lose this one. They just go for it. And with Mimer being added to the team, they're a lot more passive, and that makes it easier for Mutual Makers, who usually thrives on early game control, to have the ability to do that. I think a lot of the problem as well is that, you know, Rise takes a longer time to get going than a lot of the champions that we saw extinct lane in that top lane as well. You know, the likes of Kennen, who once you hit six, you can really start to get involved in things and that. But, you know, Tia and the Catalyst right now is what Mimer's got behind on CS, behind in the kills. And Khan is, is not offering too much to the fights right now in terms, certainly, of his damage. So. We'll have to see how that really goes for him as the game progresses. I think I think the thing is the keyword yet. I mean, because yes. obviously yeah, he, indeed. he scales up quite a bit, and Bjergsen, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to like make sure everyone understands this, that if you get a room prison on someone, like a flash room prison, and Ryze gets a full combo up, Gragas ults him, and even maybe Draven's ult comes across somehow, like that target's gonna die if they don't have a zone news, no matter who it is. So there's always potential for that to happen, and if they're able to pick someone off like that, right off the bat, if it's a high priority target like Charo or Mackler, then they have a very easy fight ahead of them. Oh, there was a hook going through, not quite connecting though, onto the fiddlesticks of Libic. 
And you can see that Makato is actually waiting here off to the side by this blue buff. They've got complete vision of it as he goes in there. Did he get it? No, he didn't. Maluno had to smite it down, but they are pushing in. Libic already got his ultimate running from this one as a flash from Bjergsen comes away and they decide to back off from that. There is a hook landing on Tacharo. Ultimate comes out of Bjergsen, but honestly not doing really the damage that they have wanted. And with Dragon now going to be in play, MYM going to go for it. Yeah, and with that Gragas Sprout coming down, like that is a big ultimate that they're going to need in these fights. Not to mention he's very low, but NIP, they're actually coming over to Dragon to try to stop it. And this could be a very bad move for This could be a huge mistake. Oh, Dragon coming in there. Going to be picked up. Maluno going to dive into the top of him. He gets charmed up. Tries to pull himself out there with the Lantern Freeze. He's going to take a lot of damage in the back. Deficio going low. Maluno comes back in. He will fall. Freeze is still doing damage to them there. And, well, they are going to force them away, and I think Meet Your Makers will have been looking a little bit more for that one. Straven, let's throw the axes out there to try and get a nice slow from Macleron towards Mimer. And they back away with, you know, a kill and a dragon. That's fine from Meet Your Makers' perspective. I think NIP got very lucky right there. It could have gone so much worse than they could have lost a lot more targets, but luckily for them, MYM just kind of wanted to force or focus on that dragon instead of really fighting here. But. Yeah, Dragon, the kill gives them a little bit of extra gold. They're up two turrets to zero right now. They have a nice 4,000 gold lead. Everyone on their team is getting fed, at least the right targets. And Charu, who has that DFG, actually has a Negatron Coke following it up. So now, you know, Mimer and Dirksen won't be able to kill him. Like, there's no burst potential right now happening out of NIP just yet. So let's have a look at the overall picture. It's 4,000 gold. That's. We're 14 minutes in, considering the, the fairly slow start, I think we can safely say that we had to this one. Meet Your Makers have done a real good job of starting to build this one out. 1,400 gold leads is what uh, Charu currently has over Bjergsen in the mid lane. If you look at Caitlyn versus uh, Draven, 4,000, let's call it 5,000 gold to 3,600. Masses of CS difference there. Two assists on Mackler as well. And that, that is actually a really key point, because once he gets... Whatever item wants to go for, it looks like he will go for Infinity Edge first. Like, that is a giant power spike that NIP can't handle because where's their tankiness coming from? And right now, it's it's no one. I mean, it's just Maluna who isn't built tanky yet at all. I mean, you have Mimer who will get tanky, but he needs to finish off a couple items before he does that. Not to mention he's already behind in CS and, and in kills or in deaths. And then Freeze, who he needed that Bloodthirster before he got out of laning phase, and now he doesn't have it. And they're in this mid game. Uh, Part, uh, part where meet your makers they have the uh, ability to siege these turrets down very easily and there's the backup called from nip they've decided to give that turret up completely bjergsen nowhere near it and mym will say well thank you very much out of middle turret you're not even going to fight for it that'll be all well and fine for us as the ward goes over that will spot bjergsen's position MYM, are they going to try and push through from this one? I mean, with with Charu and Makler in there, both able to clear out those waves pretty fast, they might be able to push things down. And it looks like they're actually just going to back away instead. They're gonna actually going to go for a split push. But it's very smart by Meech Makers realizing that, hey, we're really far ahead. We've seen in the past they kind of struggled with uh, a goal lead, even though it'd be, you know, exponentially in their favor. They would still be scared to really pull off an engage. But Maluno going to get caught, but that was not a smart ultimate on Makati. Mm, no. Kind of obvious for me of yeah. uh, Aatrox was going to be able to jump away from that one as they go in on towards Mimer. Ace in the hole comes through as well. Can he escape from that one? Just about. And that was just the last charge there from Charu's ulti that connected to him. Didn't quite have the damage to get the finishing touches off, but they may have done enough with that to get themselves another turret here. And look where Kuban is. Split pushing away because he's shed, he's strong. He doesn't have his Sunfire Cape done just yet, but he has the ability to do this. And if Anway wants to, they can do that Libic ultimate over the wall and have uh, Kuban come in with his stand united. But in the meantime, they're just going to back away and go and spend a little bit of gold right now as the Infinity Edge should be done very soon for Mackler. And the thing is, like, we talked about Mutual Makers in the first couple weeks. If they get that first turret down on you, if they get control of the game early on, they're going to be very aggressive. They're going to ward your jungle like crazy, which allows Charo to really hop around the map. And we talked about them in the pregame saying they've been changing up their strategy, but it seems like their old one's working out well for them. It seems like they've figured out a way to make their early game more powerful so they have the ability to control it and then just kind of fall back to how they know how to play. Yeah, which is that full control play style. We see their Bloodthirster now finished up by Freeze. Abyssal Scepter coming in as well for Bjergsen. The Rod of Ages is done for Mimer's Rise. So that gives them a lot more power coming through from this one. But Meat Makers won't be far behind them finishing off some more items. Yeah, you give them 
like one or two minutes longer, you're gonna have the Abyssal done, you're gonna have the IE done, you're gonna have a Sunfire Cape hopefully done for Kuban. Actually, yeah, it will be done very soon because he's just been pushing away, farming up quite a bit. The thing is, like, with how far Freeze is behind, Kuban only has to worry about the AP damage coming out of Mimer and Bjergsen. Like, he's not gonna take any damage for Freeze with that Sunfire Cape, so that's why he's rushing that Runic Bulwark. He wants that extra magic resist, he wants to be able to give that to the rest of his team, because Charu with an Abyssal and a Runic Bulwark is gonna be so hard to kill for NIP. Oh, we see the Mia coming in towards that blue buff. Only small lizard taken away there by Makla. Say thank you very much. And NIP a little bit wary here of actually sticking around to finish off that blue buff. In the meantime, Kubon is just pushing, pushing, pushing in this top lane. NIP, they're going to have to react at some point. And they're not even taking their own blue right now. I mean, just the three members of Meteor Makers are holding them up. Well, the four just charges around the corner, but they're going to take it. But at what cost? Are they really going to afford to, or can they really afford to lose a top inner turret for a blue buff? And they get stolen it. away. Yeah, they've lost it as well. That is just the most horrible thing that could have happened for NIP here. They're going to lose that inner turret at the top. They look like they want to fight as Maluno gets charmed into that one. He tries to get wow. away. Does get away. There's a massive cataclysm coming out from Akata. And here comes the fight. Pure and right at the front, exhausted. He's somehow still alive from this one. Deficio finished off, and MYM can chase through for this one now. Ace in the hole, gonna hit Mimer. He is gonna be a dead man. Maluno is very, very low. Already had his passive pop, and that will be three kills. An inner turret in the top lane as well. And that was just that cataclysm. Wow, that was ridiculous coming out of Makata right there. Knocking up five members, pulled them all together, and then Makuma coming in with that Stan United. He did. Actually, he did get the turret top lane too, yep. and now they're gonna go dragon. So they're up seven one in kills. They're up four to zero in turrets. They're up almost ten thousand gold. But this dragon, they're pretty much gonna be there. Twenty minutes in. Yeah, this is the perfect start for Meet Your Makers. And we see that really close. Nine thousand gold is basically what they've got right now in terms of a lead. And those items we were talking about earlier all gonna get start to finish off. Infinity Edge coming out for Caitlyn. He boots some mobility coming through there. For Thresh, the Abyssal Scepter done for Charu's Ari, and well, overall, that's a big spike of damage and power here for Meet Your Makers when it comes to the next ones, and you have to wonder there from NIP, the decision-making involved in that one. I mean, they let the inner turret go in the top lane at the cost of we're securing the blue buff here. Then they lost the blue <laughs> buff, lost the blue. which is just everything going wrong, and then they lose three kills after it as well. I mean. That was just horribly calculated. I couldn't have said it better myself. I, I completely agree, Joe. And I know they're looking back at it like, wow, that was a stupid move. But uh, I don't know. We talked about the pregame saying against Evil Geniuses, they were ballsy and went, hey, let's just rush that Baron because we saw, you know, um, Sh uh, Shaker back in a way. And they kind of went for something similar, but it wasn't the same circumstances. It didn't obviously work out the same way. And now with like all those items coming in with the Sunfire Cape done on Kuban, who is going to stop him from slip pushing? And the only person is really Mimer right now, and he can't stop him from teleporting away. Yeah, double Age is coming out now as well for Meet Your Makers. See how their ability to close this one out is because they are in the driving seat. They are in a position to you know, make those steps towards finishing off the game right now, but... Oh, we've seen so many teams struggle with this in the past. We've seen them versus Lemon Dogs actually struggle quite heavily with this when they had a 20... Thousand gold lead. I don't remember how late into the game it was, but it wasn't that late. And they still struggled because they had Charo and Twisted Fate who just got caught one too many times and it really forced them to just back off. And right now, I mean, they have almost that 10,000 gold lead. They have a lot of kills on a Charo, so if he gets caught and killed, that's a lot of their damage gone. Well, right now they're doing typical MYM stuff of getting deep wards into the enemy jungle, especially on that top side where the barren position is what it's really all about. There's a pink ward in that brush, and they're really desperate to get that one away. They put the flag down. <laughs> it's like, come on, we can get this one. We're going to get this one, Libby. Let's do it. And you have to keep in mind, like, there's a Fiddlesticks, and I talked about this yesterday in terms of Blitzcrank when uh, Alter was playing versus Meet Your Makers, that if you deny that vision, when you have a support like that who can be so deadly, you just somehow need to get it back. Like, you cannot afford to give up any wards in your own jungle, but at this point in the game, they kind of have to. And now it looks like they're going to lose their middle inner turret as still Kuban is just pushing that bottom lane. And Bjergsen's sitting there trying to stop him, but honestly, he can't. No, not really a lot he can do about that one. You see the silence just stripping through the uh, NIP team. 
And they're just going to keep going straight into this one, MYM. Makata taking away the jungle as much as he possibly can. Ubon is still down there. Mima now the one that's going to try and stop him from doing that, but he himself can't get involved. So if Meet Your Makers took a fight right now, it would be a 5v4. It, yeah, it definitely would. But you can see the hesitation on them right now. They just want to let Kuban go for that split push. He's actually going to just straight face tank the turn a little bit. It's on the bottom left side of your screen. But Charo, he's there in the vicinity. Looks like they're actually splitting up, going for a two-man split push and trying to get that turret down, which it looks like they might be able to accomplish here. They have the worst to spot anyone coming too, and they have Meet Your Makers being very aggressive bottom lane, or sorry, middle lane, and they have the ability to disengage if they need to. And there it is, taken down. NIP tried to chase him away from this mid lane, which worked, but it was all about buying time for that bottom lane, which Kubon is still there. Sunfire kept burning through those waves as they come, and they've got to stop this somehow, but how? <laughs> Well, I mean, th the thing is, they have to force a, fa a fast engage. Like, they have to try to catch someone and burst them down before Shen Ultimate can get through, before he can actually arrive at the party. Problem is, they don't have the damage to do that right now, and I'm looking at this like, what, like, exactly, what can they do to pretty much stop this from happening? They need to kind of gain vision of their own jungle, but if they sink 400 gold into an Oracle right now, it won't really matter because they can't fight their own jungle. So the, the vision they just spent, or the vision they tried to get, and the money they spent trying to get it, is just all wasted. So right now, it's about getting your carries fed, trying to feed that farm over to them, make sure they get it in every lane possible, and then hope that you have the damage soon to be able to take them on. Yeah, soon being a, a pretty key word, I think, in this equation. You see NYM again going back and buying up whatever they can to... <laughs> Basically, go back out there and do the, the whole rinse and repeat of this split push yeah. strategy that they're going for here with Kubon. It's currently 203 now as well, almost at 200 CS. So he's right up there with that of Charu and Bjergsen. I really want to praise Kubon actually because we talked about towards the beginning of the split when he was only playing at least, and we're saying, you know, if he doesn't get a lease, is he going to play well? And for the first week or two, he didn't. But he's been playing really well on these different champions he's being forced to pick up, like his Shen done a very good job with these. Played a lot of other champions in the past, um, including the Sandra, which he didn't do too bad at, and he's been adapting really, really well to how teams are countering him. Well, our MYM going to be able to get this turret down. It's at half HP right now, and it's definitely a slow process uh, to work that one through, but it looks like they will finally go in for that one here. Good few hits coming down once again as Mima now coming around from the side. That's 5v4, which you know, right now they're quite happy to almost bait out and then back away from and then go back in and then back away because Kubon is still pushing the top lane. And look who's got that to do with the Mimer, and that's the biggest threat to them because of him being a rise. Like, yeah, obviously Briggs can ult to you, but not going to do that much damage, especially when he isn't rank or doesn't have that rank 3 ultimate. Oh. <laughs> and they're slowly going to get this turret down. I mean, it's just it's just slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, and there's they... the pull, but... Yeah, they got the hook on towards Charu there, but honestly... Not really doing a whole lot after that one. It did force Charu to actually use his ultimate there to escape from that one as we do have the Dragon now back in play and NIP are trying to force MYM back. Yeah, this is a really key point in the game right now is... Well, that's not much damage. But <laughs> um, it's the fact that can MYM keep pushing? Can they get inhibitor turns off this? Because they've been able to take outer ones with the help of split push. But right now we do see engage coming out. Here comes Fiddle Six from the side. There's a cataclysm down and Bjergsen stood in the damage right here. He is going to get exhausted up. Makata having to back away. There is the kill on towards Aatrox. They did manage to get Makata down, but can they get away now? Bjergsen is so, so very low. There's an AC in the hole, but Mackle knows it'll probably be blocked by someone. Where are they going to go now? Meet your makers there with a one for one. Dragon is up. They'll probably take that goal and say thank you very much. I, I don't know if this is a smart move by them to just give it away because they, they're going to have such a tough time taking the inhibitor turrets down. They have a man advantage right now. Well, not a man advantage, but they have an advantage just in terms of having the initiate out of NIP be down. They don't have a Gragas ultimate. They don't have Luna to jump in there, and they have the ability to siege these turrets down very quickly. They could have even gone for Baron right there, but they're just going to play it safe, go for Dragon, and safe, which they've done in the past, has almost made them lose games. There is the dragon going down nonetheless, and 12,000 gold is what Meet Your Makers have right now. And I remember that game you were talking about because yeah. we were casting in like, 
Okay, meet your makers. They've got a four million gold lead. They've got <laughs> the best items, uh, you know, two or three items more than their opponents. They've got the ability to do this one, but the pure caution coming out from them, which you can understand as well. Everything is on the line right now. There's so much pressure on these teams. Uh, you know, we, we always talk about the, the advancement towards the World Finals, towards those playoffs that is what they're really aiming for. But there's also the flip side of that, that if you start losing here and you finish bottom, you're not just fighting for playoffs, you're actually fighting for your whole careers uh, from that as well. So there's pressure from both sides here on both of these teams. So that's why they're being so cautious. Meet your makers here. I've actually got that Oracle running a pink watered Baron. Will they go from it I, at form? says no for me at this point <laughs> in the game. And the thing is, there's a fine line between being cautious and too cautious, and they're trying to walk that, that very thin line, and they're kind of having a tough time of really seeing where that line comes down. Is Libic gonna dodge a pull there? That might have been the engage that NFP was looking for, but I mean, you're very right. Like, if they are at the bottom of the table, they're fighting for their career, they're fighting for their jobs, and we saw how hard it they're was on some of the players last season. You know, with a no-no off of against authority, like when he didn't re-qualify, we saw him, he was so broken, he was so upset. And you can imagine that anyone playing in LCS right now would ha have that same response. So we've got a two-man Baron attempt from Meet Your Makers. NIP currently are sat back, being pretty much zoned out by the annoyance that is surprise party fiddlesticks and Charu in there as well. And this Baron is going down slowly but surely, and he is going to go on to Meet Your Makers now. Solid pickup from them. NIP didn't know it was happening. And they haven't spotted it yet. And then they spotted it now. <laughs> I was like, are they going to try to make a play happen off this without it being spotted? But yeah, with the Baron, like, if they can't push an inhibitor turret down now, then they are giving NIP the time to farm up their items because they're ahead, you know, across the board in terms of that. But the longer they saw this game out, the stronger Mimer's going to get. I mean, look at his items. He's, he's getting there. He's got the magic resist now. He's got the tier stacked up. He's got the Rod of Aegis stacked. He's going to let Bjergsen get his death cap. So his damage, you know, spikes up. Maluna's going to get even tankier. Freeze is going to get the damage he needs. So if they don't make a move soon, they're, the whole 10, 14,000, whatever amount it's at right now, gold that they've been able to accumulate for the past 30 minutes is going to be for nothing. Well, we'll see. MYM, as you said, they struggled to finish out games. The thinking behind that one, uh, I remember the, the interview with Makatu yeah, yeah. who said, you know, it, one mistake is all you really need and you can you can really lose a game like that. So that's, they're obviously sticking to that mindset here, the whole careful, slowly but surely kind of mentality, which, as you said, let's not forget, NIP yesterday were behind against Evil Geniuses. They were in a position of pretty much losing that game the way it was going. They sat back, they patiently farmed things up, they got to a position where they could actually do something, and one smart decision or bad decision, whichever way you look at it from EG's side, they were able to get straight back in and win that game. Yeah, and there's there's one thing you have to keep in mind on top of that is that if they do lose someone, you know, Beach Pickers does lose a member of their team right now, NIP has zero turrets. That is so much free yeah. gold sitting there waiting for them to pick up if they do get a five-man push somewhere that they can just buy items pretty much out of nowhere. So you're definitely right. Like, they need to be cautious, but they also need to get inhibitor down. Like, they need that little crack in the wall to become the hole in the wall for them to finally get through and start to get this game locked down. Well, we see that they are finally starting to push up this middle lane now. Waves not lasting very long when Chara, uh, Charu and Makla get themselves going. That's right, already down to half. Makla actually getting hooked in. They're going to barrel him down. He's a dead man as Mima picks up that kill. Meet Your Makers start to back away, but they're chasing him for this one. Flashes from Meet Your Makers. They're getting off, and that's the kind of thing that Meet Your Makers were talking about. Your AD carry getting hooked underneath the turret, absolutely destroyed from NIP. Yes, they threw pretty much every single ultimate at that one, but they got the worth AD it. carry down. <laughs> They're saying worth. But I mean, we think back to the spring split with Deficio on Thresh uh, against against Authority. He actually got a couple of pulls onto No No that pretty much gave him the game. Like he actually was able to pull No No, who was on Ezreal multiple times under that turret, and that was able to get him back in the game. And he's able to prove it yet again. But right now. With that kill that NIP got, what did they take off of it? Nothing. I mean, it's obviously a little bit hard to do that when you have Charles pushing bottom and no one can really go heads up against him. But the thing is, if you really get killed like that, you need to be able to make something happen off of it. Makata at this point just stealing away much of that jungle as he possibly can. Red buff is going to be going over to him. I'm assuming that Makla is going to be getting given his own red buff, who you know, right now actually he's 1-1-5. I think if Makla gets caught out in a fight here, 
outside of Charu, then they've not really got that much damage. Exactly. And that's a real problem for MYM. Exactly. And it goes back to what you're saying, that one little mistake, one person getting caught can completely turn a game around for you. And if it's Charu, if it's Mackler, exactly. That's all their damage. Kuban's not going to do anything here. Libic's not going to do anything, obviously. And neither one Makati. So he needs to not be in that position. But it's weird if you think about it. Should he be in position to get pulled ever? Because he's Caitlyn. It's, it's really hard to get in that position, but you have to give NIP credit. You have to give Fisio credit for being able to spot that mistake and take advantage of it. Charo just got hooked there as MYM now going for another push on this middle turret. They've had a bad experience there once before. Well, let's see if they can get past that and go in for it this time. It's pretty low now already. Got about 20% of its health remaining as that turret. They throw down a few more traps into it. To be honest, that Shen can tank up a lot of stuff when it comes to hits from the turret. They could probably deal with that just from uh, Kubon actually getting in there and tanking that one turret up. But as I said, careful it is for MYM. I'm pretty sure that they could just dive the turret. Like, for instance, have Lubick ult over the wall, have Kubon go in ult, or, you know, uh, and taunt someone, let Mackler and Charu finish the turret down, they'd kill it right away, and they'd be able to win the fight. The problem they have that the longer that they let this one go, the less likely they are going to be able to actually do that yeah, to, exactly. to, to fight them in there. So now time is ticking here for Meteor Makers. We're 34 minutes into this one as Makata and Charu now pushing that bottom turret. What are they going to do about this one? Kubon reluctant to tank the tower. Makata backs away and they do go into that middle turret. Still not quite finished off. Still got a speck of help on it. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, is this a weak point within the Mutual Makers team in terms of they're counting on NIP to make a mistake? mistake. Oh, no, this is not good for Makati. Oh, actually, did manage to get off towards his flag there. It was a little bit of a jerky move over there because of all the CC coming out onto him, but surviving with his life. Meet your makers. I think one thing's for sure, it's not going to be just one Baron this game. <laughs> oh, definitely. I was to do a Charu actually going and trying to get some damage, just trying to push them away from this turret because it's so low. And I was trying to say, oh, they do get the turret and they're going to engage. Yeah, Kubon going in for this one. Charu at the back. There's a lot of damage coming around. Is Limit going to get hooked in? But there's the Cataclysm coming down. Kubon going to use Stan United. They do manage to proc Maluno's passive here as they go right on top of him. He tries and successfully jumps away for a while before Mackler actually comes in. And this opens the floodgates now for Meteor Maker. It's five versus two. Can they finish it off right here? No, Joe. They're going to go back and go for Baron. <laughs> oh, Mackler, actually, I don't think he can duel for his right now. But anyway, so I was trying to say is that Meet Your Makers, they're in the winning position right now. Like, they have the gold lead. They have the items, everything. But they're counting on NIP to still make another mistake for them to finish the game when it should be the other way around. It should be NIP counting on Meteor Makers to make a mistake for them to get back in the game or to be able to get some sort of advantage. And it's not necessarily exactly what you need, but still, either way, Meteor Makers are able to get an inhibitor off of it. And they do have this nice advantage where Baron will be up in 30 seconds. They have Superman's pushing middle. And we have a giant gold lead between the 80 carries. Not just even. Look at the, the mid laners there as well. There's a 4,000 gold lead between them. There's 3,000 between the uh, between Rise and Chen. Uh, the supports, if you look at that, if you want to, we might as well. We've got a little bit of time, I think, left for this one. 2,400 uh, is the difference in there as well. So now, at this point, Meet Your Makers, you know, they've made those steps of actually getting, taking the inhibitor down. Baron's coming up here next. They've gone back. They've bought up Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer. Bloodthirster now in there for Caitlyn with a pickaxe as well, working towards that last whisper. Uh, we've got the makings of a Randuin's Omen on fiddlesticks at this point as well, just to go, just to show you how on how that's going. It makes sense though because we saw an NA new ten dude decks, I believe from Co Team Coast, oh. um, actually built tank fiddlesticks in the jungle because your your base numbers oh. on fiddlesticks ultimate is ridiculous and. And NIP trying to make a play there. I mean, they didn't have the Oracle, I believe, so they couldn't even kill the ward that was in there. But, I mean, the base stats on, on Fiddle Six's ultimate is just really high. So you just build yeah. straight tank, pop the Rainers when you get in the middle of them. The whole team is slowed, and it allows for Coupon to hit a nice, easy taunt. Well, let's see how far they get in that Let one. it reset, guys. Calm down. Baron's just going crazy there. He's like, no, I've not reset yet, Lewick. I'm going to hit you for a while. You see Ulti thrown out there by Freeze to push out that bottom wave a little bit more. Deficio here getting out of position there and trying clearing out some wards. And NIP look like they don't want to give up Baron 2. It looks like their idea for getting back in this game as it was against EG is to make a play on Baron. But what's so weird is this is the first time they've been out of their base in the past 
10 minutes, it feels like. They do have an Orc on Deficio, luckily, but they're not clearing out all these wards that are currently around everywhere. And in the meantime, Kuban's just still pushing bottom. We saw how that happened earlier on with him and that top lane when they were around blue buff, and it worked out horribly for him. Now they're doing it again oh. with the red buff, and it gets stolen away. Nicely done by Mackle there. Pilt over Peacemaker comes through, says thank you very much. As you said, though, Kuban split pushing this bottom lane. The turret is low he's going down here possibly just to those uh, minions coming in kuban does actually back away from that one meantime actually it's not quite as low as i figured out but i think it will go down baron has been started by meteor makers turret does fall in the end there's stan united coming in for kuban going in on top of makla but can they actually get in here and make anything uh, work from this they keep that baron going makla actually going in there from the back side, so Baron oh, has been sorted. No. There's the ultimate out of Bjergsen, and that's really one thing going down as the DFG comes in there. Charu going very, very deep, but he's done so much damage. Taunt doesn't quite land. Ace in the hole goes through to hammer down Deficio as they turn, hit Kuban, but look, he doesn't take any damage, really. More than half of his help, uh, health still left after that fight. He's got a Warmogs, that um, uh, running bulwark, plus a Sunfire Cape as well. MYM now with the second Baron of the game, a naked inhibitor on bottom. It's their game right now to finish. And I think they're going to be able to do it on this next one. NAP, I mean, you heard Demon say it earlier. The chances of coming back for two inhibitors being down is so ridiculously low. It's so hard to do. And NAP, they, they need to fight on this, but they can't fight against a Baron at Meet Your Makers who are still being very hesitant for some reason. They have Baron. They have an 18,000 gold lead, and yet they're not committing to this. Well, slow but sure, Jason. We, we've learned this about Meet Your Makers by now. Apparently. Not quite fast enough, I think. <laughs> I see an able to down to <laughs> half HP or just a little bit less at this point. The barrel's only going to explode in a certain range. That's never going to change, guys. You can still dodge it, but no. All that still, wasted beer, though. So all that wasted beer and bad times. <laughs> uh, now we see the charm landing onto Maluno. He's going to get his passive pop, but are they going to stick around to try and kill him off afterwards? The answer is no. I really wish I, I could say what's going through MYM's head. I mean, obviously, it's about what Makade said in that interview. I mean, they don't want to get caught. They don't want to lose this game with what's at stake. They get the second inhibitor down. They're going to go for a third one right now. And honestly, they could probably face tank it. They could probably engage right now if they wanted. But they don't want to. That seems to be the key point. And there's the knockout. This surely is going to be the fight. Cataclysm gets three men. They flash away from it. It's Char who takes a lot of damage. But Mima is going to fall down. It's now a five versus four. A one minute spawn time for Mima. As the second or the first inhibitor really that they took down goes down again. And now five versus four to win the game for Meteor Makers. Those Nexus turrets going down very, very quickly. The first one will fall. They've got super minions in there as well. Now it's just the Nexus. Hit the Nexus, Meet Your Makers. They're going to go in for it. Fiddlesticks running his ultimate. And Meet Your Makers are finally going to take down Ninjas in Pajamas. A much deserved and, uh, you know, a well thought out victory there for Meet Your Makers. It took them a while, as we said, but that theory that they had before of not making any silly mistakes, don't risk it, pick up the safe win. That's exactly what they've done. It took them a while, but they still got to that end goal. That they still got to that finish line of picking up that win, the much needed win, just like you're saying. Trying to keep themselves off the bottom of the tables. I believe it actually ties them up with SK now uh, at the bottom. And honestly, I mean, it's, it's not the way you ideally want to win a game. But if you can win the game doing that, you'll take it. I mean, look back at Evil Geniuses when they used to farm till that very late game, getting so much gold accrued throughout, throughout, and then finally pushing it home just, just, just by the book. Yeah, and at the end of that one, Charu went in 6-0-5, and again that teleport really helping to start things off for him. I mean, we saw him twice getting involved, twice they picked up kills through that, and that really was the start. He had a DFG very early on, went into the Abyssal Scepter after that, and well, just kept going through. I'm trying to think, did he even use it after those two days? I don't believe so. Yeah, I don't, I'm thinking, I'm like, I don't remember if he did or not. But in the end, it still worked out for him. And you look across the board on the items, because we can still see it here. I mean, Freeze, he was stuck at that Bloodthirster Last Whisper for at least 20 minutes. Yeah. I mean, he built a Zeal and a Pickaxe. He wasn't able to finally get the next item up he needed. I mean, they had three high priority targets that all do that farm funnel too. And they were always all grouped up together at one place. So getting that farm was really hard for them to do. I mean, Mimer's items didn't change. I mean, he got an Archangel staff. That, that's about it. Nothing else was built up. No armor against a Macula who was really strong. No more magic resist against uh, Charu. It was just, it's really unfortunate for NIP, but still games like that, when you have a new person on the team, it really shows you where your flaws are and mm -hmm. what you need to fix. And I think the NIP can be pretty 
pretty happy with how this weekend's gone. I know that sounds almost wrong to say after you lose a game in that fashion, but the fact is that they've got a new player in the team, and Mima, you know, we talked about the depth of the champion pool. We've obviously not seen that up until now. We've seen him play Rise twice. The first game was shaky for a lot of it, but they made the right decision to actually be able to turn that game and get the victory over EG. This time around, Meet Your Makers did it the, the, the real safe way. I mean, we can be honest here, it's not the most entertaining League of Legends to watch, but it's not about entertainment at this stage of the league. It's about getting the win. It's about getting to the playoffs. It's about getting to the World Finals at the Staples Center in front of thousands of people, millions of people watching. I mean, if that's if you can win a game like that against, you know, CJ Frost, or CJ just Frost, I mean, you'll take that any day. Well, <laughs> might be a little bit of a way to well, go with know, that yeah. one. Meet Your Makers <laughs> still tied, of course, at the bottom of the table right now with SK Gaming, who uh, went down to Evil Geniuses a little bit earlier on. So now there's still a lot of work to be done, but they're by no means too far away. I mean, they're just one win behind NIP, for example. They're two wins away from some of the teams towards the top and three wins away from the actual top of the table. So it's still very, very possible. We've obviously got another week and then the final week, week nine is going to be a super week where each team is going to be playing mm -hmm. five games. Now, if you look at the table now, that last week is going to change everything. Could yeah. change everything. I mean, look back towards Tenerife. Obviously, we don't have that three-way tie for first place, but still every team's within three games of each other of getting from last to first or flip side first to last well we're going to head over to shocks who's waiting with an interview with makata from meet your makers thank you very much joe uh, makata congratulations great victory against nip here what was your biggest fear going into this game we know that draven can be really destructive in his early levels but you were able to keep him in check how did you do that well uh we did our lane phase quite good quite well uh, we were not used to win uh, early game stage lately, so it was kind of surprising to us that everything went fine and without big mistakes, without huge mistakes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that uh, NIP players got uh, like uh, cut off, gu off guard uh, and they forgot about Charu's TP, I guess, and they got like bited at the top lane. It was actually bottom lane, but at the top lane, so they got caught there. And from that point, I think not much they could do about it. Yeah, Taro carried again, um, which is again, this thing we always have with Meteor Makers. It's a great thing to have, but isn't it a great danger too, that he has to carry in order for you guys to win the game a lot of times? Well, basically, whole Europe is a lot about mid laners, actually, like every single team. And it's in LCS got like great mid laners, um, but yeah, obviously Charu is like our strongest, very strong point, and we uh, he has to carry a lot, uh, and that's why lately we're trying something new. Uh, we're trying to practice different strats, uh, focus on, for example, more uh, of AD carry and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's not easy. Like uh, we saw. EG trying to change their playstyle for a year or something like that and it's not always easy so we got to keep trying and uh, focusing developing new strategies but on the same on the other hand not forgetting about the current one yeah because yesterday you tried something new didn't turn out that well so how are you heading into these next couple of weeks that are so crucial for your team well uh, right now right after this LCS uh, play week uh, we're heading all to Warsaw, then travel uh, to Lublin, to my uh, home city, and we'll boot camp there until the end of LCS. So uh, I think we'll get some extra time to work as a team, to analyze, to practice, and uh, I'm pretty sure it will pay off. All right, thank you very much, and good luck with that. Thank you. Now time to check in with Joe and Jason once more to guide us through today's results and standings. Thanks a lot, Shocks. And, well, a long day, I think we can say, from this one. I think every single game was pretty long uh, in terms of time. And, you know, some of them a little bit more spectacular than the others. But as we've come to really expect when things are so close like this, that, you know, neither team that's played against each other in any of these games wants to give any kind of advantage away at this stage of the game. Everything's so careful. 
Yeah, look how we began the entirety of the summer split back in uh, week one at DreamHack. Like, teams were just going crazy, being very aggressive, yeah. not caring what was going to happen. But now as we get closer to that final point, just like I said, they're being more careful, more cautious. They want to make sure to take the wins when they know they should be able to win because every single one right now matters. I mean, every heads-up match you have against each other with, you know, alternate Gambit, for instance, Gambit up 3-0 against them um, in their series, which mm -hmm. means if they're tied up, Gambit's going to have a better position uh, against them in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the important thing. Let's have a look at today's results, though, and just recap on those. We started off, of course, with Alternate versus Gambit with a very, very good-looking Gambit coming out from that one to pick up the win and pretty much knock Alternate away from that first place for the first time in the summer split. Mm -hmm. And, and then... Sorry. No, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they, they definitely did. And considering how they looked the day before, it was a little bit... Weird, but kind of we've gotten used to seeing Gambit do this, where they're really bad one day and they just come out amazing the next. So then we moved into Fnatic versus Lemon Dogs, and well, once again, the the public voting wrong against the Lemon Dogs. They love this. The last time they won against Fnatic it was 92%. I think today was 86%, somewhere around the mid 80s, and. Lemon Dogs picked it up again, so they, they like playing with the crowd against them, it seems. Yeah, and we actually remember in Tenerife, we talked to Myth, and he said, you know, we don't, they don't have a lot of fans, but, mm -hmm. you know, over the summer split, they probably should gain quite a few because they are looking unstoppable right now. And then game after that was SK versus Evil Geniuses, the clash of the old guard with EG, ended up coming out victorious right there with a much-needed victory, separating themselves from SK on the sands. And then as you just saw, Michi Makers taking that very slow, methodical win over NIP, but it helps get them tied with SK out of that last spot. Well, let's have a look at the league table then and see where, after another crazy weekend, we are left. Look at that. Lemon Dogs, top of the table. 12 wins, 8 losses. Fnatic behind them, tied with Alternate and Gambit for second place at 11 for 9. Then Ninjas in pajamas, 10 for 10 in the mid spot. And then, of course, EG, MYM, and SK running at the bottom with EG taking a place ahead of them. And, and Joe, I, I'm looking at this. I'm just... I'm amazed because I know back in week one, before we even started the summer split, I was I was like, oh yeah, these teams are going to be on the top, these teams are going to be on the bottom, and I could have been more wrong. Yeah, the, I, I really couldn't have. There's just no way to, to even be predicting right now, I think, as to who's going to be there come the end of the season, who's going to be at the top, who's going to be at the bottom. No idea. That's it from us here at the Casa Days, though. Make sure you're here next week because we're probably going to have no idea after that week as well. That's <laughs> how close it is right now. Now, let's get over to Shocks for some final thoughts of the weekend. Thank you very much. You couldn't be more right. Everything left to play here. We saw the resurgence of Gambit today. The Lemon Dogs who take first place. EG are able to grab a win against SK Gaming. And at the end of the day, meet your makers getting a very much needed win against NIP. Everything is to be played here in the next couple of weeks are going to be so incredibly intense. And uh, that's going to be it from us. But you only have to wait a couple more days for your LCS uh, action because the NA LCS returns on Thursday with the amazing 18-2 Cloud9 taking on Team Dignitas. The show will be starting at 10 p.m. Central European Summertime. That is 1 p.m. Pacific. And we're going to return here in Europe next week, Saturday, at 6 o'clock Central European Summertime. That is 9 a.m. Pacific with six big matches. We're going to be seeing Gambit versus Evil Geniuses, SK versus Alternate, followed by Lemon Dogs versus MYM, Fnatic versus NIP, Alternate versus MYM, and we close out that day with Lemon Dogs versus SK Gaming. On behalf of D-Man, Jason, Joe, myself, and the entire production crew, thank you very much for tuning in. See you next week.